Road transport is constantly increasing. This also means that the transport of goods through tunnels is increasing. And in light of recent years' fire catastrophes, it is important to understand the large-scale performance of fires in tunnels. How they ignite, how they spread, how large they can become, and how firefighters can help potential victims of these fires and minimise the damage caused by them. To answer some of these questions, fire tests were performed in the Runehammer Tunnel, a 1600 metre long abandoned road tunnel on the Norwegian west coast. The project was initiated and performed by SP, the Swedish National Testing and Research Institute, in cooperation with our sister organisations, TNO in the Netherlands and Sintef in Norway. Performing such large-scale tests requires careful preparations, both for the data collection and the protection of personnel, equipment and the tunnel itself. For the safety of the personnel, the tunnel ceiling and walls near the fire were protected by a system of passive fire protection, built up of fireboards provided by Promat International and installed by Garco. As all recent large tunnel fires in Europe have involved several heavy goods vehicles or HGV trailers, the experimental setup simulated a HGV trailer. The commodities tested included four different mixtures of cellulose and plastic materials and were placed on a rack storage system. The four commodities used in four consecutive tests were wood pallets and plastic pallets, wood pallets and polyurethane mattresses, a mixture of furniture and fixtures, and finally polystyrene cups in cardboard boxes on wood pallets. The setup was 10 and a half meters long, three meters wide and four and a half meters high, and was covered with a polyester tarpaulin. The local fire brigade assisted the test team. Near the setup, temperatures and heat fluxes were measured. The course of events during the tests were recorded using several video cameras. The experimental data was sent to computers near or outside the portals, either through buried cables or using a wireless radio LAN system. Flame spread to adjacent vehicles was studied using a target positioned downstream of the main setup. The tunnel is owned by the Norwegian Road Administration. The fire was located one kilometre into the tunnel. Ignition took place on the upstream side of the setup. The ignition sources consisted of two small fiberboard cubes soaked with heptane, ignited by a portable propane torch. After an initial period of slow fire growth, the fire spreads rapidly into the commodity. Shortly after ignition, all personnel withdrew to the safety of the upstream tunnel opening. Airflow in the tunnel was created by two mobile fans from Big Innovations in Germany, giving a wind speed of approximately 3 metres per second at the beginning of each test.
The gas composition and smoke density were measured at the measurement station 100 metres inside the downstream portal. The smoke you see is emanating from the downstream portal. A wood pallet was positioned between the trailer and the target to further study the fire spread. One problem often arising in tunnel fires is backlayering, or smoke travelling upstream. This phenomena was clearly seen in the tests despite the forced ventilation. This poses a significant problem both for people trying to escape from a tunnel fire and for the rescue services since the temperature increases upstream of the fire and visibility decreases. The smoke is also highly toxic. These kinds of fires give off very high radiation, both upstream, which is a problem for the firefighters and victims of the fire, and downstream, which leads to a rapid fire spread to other vehicles. The pulsation shown here coincided with the most intense part of the fire. The maximum heat release rates measured during the four tests range from 70 megawatts to over 200 megawatts. The upper value represents the largest fire ever studied in a tunnel fire test. These heat release rates are much higher than those that are traditionally used for the design of road tunnels. Only petrol tankers have previously been thought to represent such a potential for heat release in a fire situation. The measured gas temperatures were over 1280 degrees Celsius in each test, with a maximum of 1365 degrees Celsius in the test with the highest heat release rate. Spalling of the unprotected rock tunnel structure occurred during each test. Thus, between each test, the tunnel ceiling was checked and loose rocks were removed for the safety of personnel. All combustible material was consumed during the tests. Only the deformed rack storage and nails were left. The tunnel ceiling was affected by the intense heat during the tests causing some severe spalling of unprotected parts of the tunnel structure. Downstream of the test site, the road was covered with debris. This spalling posed a safety risk for the personnel in these tests, but it also poses a risk in a real tunnel fire both for the escaping people and the rescue services. The gas temperature was high enough several hundred metres from the fire to cause spalling of the tunnel structure.
These tests were mainly financed by Swedish authorities and research boards. However, several other organisations played an essential role in making these tests possible.